Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today I wanted to take a look at Quake 2, which in case you missed it over the past few days, there is now a mod available where you can actually run Quake 2 with ray tracing on as long as you are running an RTX graphics card and you're willing to go ahead and download and set up a mod. So today I wanted to walk you through the visual differences between the game, which you can obviously see on your screen right now, along with the performance metrics. And also I'm going to do a setup guide at the end of the video. So if you do want to get it up and running, you can give it a try for yourself on the game demo, or if you want to buy it, it's only like $5 over on Steam anyway. So really not that much if you were just curious to play Quake 2 with ray tracing enabled. Today's video is brought to you by levelgo.com where you could save money on games and software for your Windows 10 PC. And if you need a Windows 10 key, they've got you covered where you can get a Windows 10 Pro key right now for just $15.75. Also Microsoft Office 2016 for under 30 bucks or 2019 Professional Plus for just under 60. And if you use my code JKL10 at checkout, you'll save 10% off your software purchase when you hit up levelgo.com with the link down in the description below. Now, as you can see in the side-by-side -side comparison here with ray tracing turned on, the performance takes a massive hit. And with it off, the frame rate is actually limited to 250 FPS. I could not find a way to remove the frame rate cap on Quake 2, or there were some config tweaks you could do, which I tried, didn't really seem to work and let me go over 250 frames per second even with vsync off so that was kind of the limit there and it definitely looked like it had a lot of headroom there as you could see the gpu is only at like what 20 to 30 percent utilization so clearly there's a lot of performance being left on the table with the rtx 2080 ti paired up with the 9900k here at 1440p 4k would be an absolute breeze to still get a locked 250 frames per second however with ray tracing turned on the frame rate can barely maintain 60 frames per second. It's just that darn taxing having ray tracing enabled in a game, even a game as old as Quake 2. And you might be asking me, hey, Joker, why are you excited about this? The frame rate's in the toilet. What is so good about having ray tracing available in a game like Quake 2? Well, to me, honestly, what it says is the possibilities of what could happen now that we know this something like this could be enabled through mods and not just a developer coming along and updating a game or coming out with a new game that supports ray tracing in a triple a title so this definitely has me excited for the modding scene which i'm a big fan of in games like skyrim the elder scroll series in general fallout witcher 3 um you know kingdom come deliverance games like that if someone can come along and mod those games and be able to put ray tracing in them faster than what developers can actually put out games to support on rtx graphics cards then that is certainly an exciting thing as i think it could breathe life into a lot of games specifically the ones I mentioned there, is I would love to go back and play The Witcher 3 with ray tracing turned on. I mean, come on, that would be absolutely outstanding. The game already is one of the best looking games of all time. Imagine it with ray tracing turned on, although Quake 2 is maybe not the most, uh, you know, stellar, uh, you know, game to choose from. And, you know, the game looks extremely dated, even with ray tracing turned on. And I would say with this implementation of the engine, it's not that great. Um, but this is like the first version of it. It's running on Vulkan. The original version is running on OpenGL, as you can see. So yeah, huge performance hit here running this mod. And just to give you an idea of what the performance is like, obviously, since the frame rate was locked with RTX off, the average frame rate was 250 frames per second with a 1% low of 208, while with RTX on, we got an average of 55 FPS and a 1% low of 43, and that was at 1440p, with the game otherwise completely maxed out. So I didn't want to go through and test every RTX card and every resolution. I just wanted to give you an idea of a baseline of the performance difference you could see with RTX on versus off, even with the $1,200 RTX 2080 Ti. Now, if you want to get this up and running for yourself, you have a couple of ways you can go about it. First, you can go ahead and grab Quake 2 over on Steam, which, as I said at the start, is only 5 bucks. You can get all the Quake games actually for $25, and there are some really kick-ass classic first-person arena shooters, um, and there's probably still people playing them today, surprisingly. You will still find people rocket jump, rocket jumping all over the place in Quake titles for multiplayer games. Maybe it's not going to have a big a scene as something like COD Black Ops 4 or Battlefield 5 or whatever, but there's definitely, you can usually find at least a game of Quake 2 somewhere playing multiplayer. So if you want to get this mod, the mod is, go I'm going to have links to everything down in the description below, but the mod is called Q2 or Quake 2 VKPT. I know quite the mouthful, really rolls off the tongue 
if you were to ask me. So if you head on over to the website, you can go ahead and download the, if you already got the game, you can use that. Or if you want, you can actually download the demo completely for free, which is linked on there, the Quake 2 demo. So you can grab this right here, the Quake 2 starter, and you can go ahead and download this and install it on your system. And there's one more thing you're gonna need, which is the Windows binaries on GitHub. So once you got it on here, just go ahead and download this file right here, save it to your PC. Same goes for the zip file for the mod over on GitHub. Go ahead and download that as well. They'll both download in your browser, and then you'll be able to go ahead and open them up. So we'll go into our downloads folder now, and we will take a look at how to get this all set up. As you can see, I've got two of them here because I already did it. Um, I'll go ahead and delete the old one. So here we go. Now we've got the Quake 2 starter. We'll go ahead and double click on that, open it, go to next. It's going to install the C Quake 2 starter if you wanted to install somewhere else, obviously install it somewhere else, but I'm just going to put it there for the sake of ease and, you know, so you guys can follow along at home without having to change anything. Just go ahead and hit next and install, follow through all of this, and it's really just that easy. And don't go ahead and launch the game just yet. We're going to go ahead and close it out now. Now, you'll see right here that I've got the zipped up files from the mod that I downloaded. I'm just going to go ahead and right-click that and extract the files with WinRAR to a separate folder right here in my folder. Open that up, go to the folder that's inside, and you've got a bunch of files in here as well as a readme, which wasn't very clear, which is why I wanted to do this guide for you guys if you do want to try to run it. And we're going to take all the files here except for the readme. I mean, you could take the readme if you wanted to. It wouldn't really affect anything. But we're just going to copy everything in here, go over to see where it installed, which is just the base folder C, Quake 2 Starter, open that up, and then just paste it in there. And if, when it prompts you, if you want to replace the files in the destination, you can go ahead and do so. If you want to back them up ahead of time, you can, uh, or you'll just have to reinstall the game later, which is not going to be that hard, honestly, as it's a pretty, e pretty small game file um, to begin with. So now that it is completely installed, you can go ahead and either run the demo here, which is q2pro.exe, or if you want to run the modded version with RTX, you would run the modded executable. Just go ahead and double click that, and it will go ahead and launch the game, which will prompt you with a very loud boom. If you want, it, it'll, for me, it opens up in windowed mode, so go to full screen, you just want to hit alt enter, or yeah, click on it and alt enter, there we go. And then pretty much you'll be in the game. You can go ahead and customize the video settings and get it all set up you want. And it'll support 4K, although at 4K I was getting like 30 frames per second. I'll go ahead and run into it right now here so you guys can see what I'm talking about on the on the modded version that is. So the, go ahead and launch the demo. Um, go ahead and launch that. And you will see here, I'll turn down my volume so it's not blasting. This is 4K. Um, you know, 4K with ray tracing. You can see the frame rate is down in the 20s. So I actually had to play at 1440p to get a manageable 60 frames per second. Obviously, 1080p would run even better. But yeah, there it is. You guys can download this. You could set it up. You can try out the demo. Um, you could run this demo, which is just basically on Rails. Or if you wanted to, you can run the multiplayer demo or go into the single player as well. Easy, medium, hard, or nightmare difficulty. Whatever is your preference. And you can go around in the game world. You can see this is at 4K again. And the frame rate's pretty bad, but you can at least run around, you can experience the game and see the real-time uh, ray tracing effects, you know, reflecting off of your gun and things like that. Very hard to aim, actually, with a frame rate this low. But you can see all of those real-time ray tracing effects off of my, my gun. These are definitely not path trace. These are absolutely ray traced because it is being done in real time, not through traditional rasterization methods. Uh, again, as far as we know right now, you are required to have an RTX graphics card to get this running. I will continue to try to maybe get this running on something like a Vega graphics card, if that's possible, using DXR. I would definitely love to do that. If I can, and there's some kind of tweaking involved to do that, I will definitely update you guys in a future video on running Vega on this, if uh, if that's a possibility. But look at, the, look at that water. Look at the reflections in that water. Isn't that... It's pretty amazing looking, if you ask me. I mean, looking at that... Look at, even though the floor is like basically a glossy texture and I could walk right across it. Um, at least it looks pretty darn hot unless you press C, you can go underneath it. And then you're seeing a reflections of the ocean floor, which is also pretty cool. Oh my God, look at my arm. My arm is right there reflecting. Look at that. The denoiser needs a little bit of work, but hey, this is pretty cool. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you want to try anything. As I said, links will be down there for the demo, the GitHub page, as well as the Steam page if you want to go pick it up for just $5 and have the full game and the license for that. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys, though. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Sarah.